talk about All Berkshire right, Hathaway first. first. So this one is Warren Buffett's investment company. You know the guy. He's the world's most favorite uh, investor, the world's kind of investment grandpa. He says such incredible and wonderful things. And the third wealthiest man in the world. Exactly. So you can't sneeze at that. No. $407.4 billion of market cap. And that's if you add together the Berkshire A's and B's. Price to earnings ratio is quite hard to pin down. It depends on which system and website you consult, but 23.1 was the one we came up with. No dividends. He reckons he's better at managing money than you are, so what do you want a dividend I for? hate to say it, but he kind of is. He's got a really good long track record there. Of that yeah. $434-odd billion in market cap, we need to understand a, a, you know, about 85 to $90 billion is cash called float from the insurance business. 85 to 90 billion dollars. That's okay. over a trillion rand for mm -hmm. those playing the home game here. Um, <laughs> mainly that comes from the insurance business. You know, you yes. pay insurance premiums. Insurance companies don't always pay you out, as we well know, and they get to keep that money and use it for further investment. And that's part of the secret of his success, Absolutely, isn't it? is the reinvestment of that capital into other businesses. So the insurance business is GEICO. That's a very big short-term insurer in the U.S., plus some other reinsurance businesses. Yes, huh? correct. So you've got the reinsurance business, and you've also got Berkshire Hathaway Insurance. Makes up yeah. about 30% of the earnings of the company. The other large chunk is the industrial holdings, uh, the railway company BNSF, yep. as well as Berkshire Hathaway Energy, and the recent um, precision parts, I think. Yes. Precision cast parts. Uh, precision cast parts. It sounds a bit weird, but they manufacture things like turbine blades that go Correct. into Correct, so really engines. high technology. We're not, we're not talking yeah. about hammers and nails here. We're talking about <laughs> serious technology. That was recently purchased. That's another 30% of the business. Yep. And then the other 30% are all the actual extra holdings they have. You know, they're one of the largest shareholders in Coca-Cola, as an example. Yes. One of the largest shareholders now are in Apple. They recently increased the Apple stake, so it's the second largest holding. Right. Did very well in the banks during the financial crisis. They actually lent the banks a lot of money, got a lot of shares. And a big, big holding in Wells Fargo. Correct, which has taken a bit of a slump in the last couple of yep. days, but definitely up from the uh, little crisis they yes. had a while ago, opening yes. up all those fictitious American accounts. American Express, I think, is in there as well. Doing very, very well, specifically yeah. on the Trump rally. So, so that's, that's that investment portfolio. Correct. So when you buy Berkshire, apart from buying a piece of the storied investment company that Mr. Buffett controls, you're getting all these underlying bits. But here's the question. The man is how old now? Ancient. Him and Charlie Munger. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie Munger's <laughs> even older. He's the chair of the board or something. I think Warren's probably in his mid, to, mid to late 80s and uh, Charlie's pushing 90 on his early 90s at and the moment. And he eats hamburgers and drinks cherry cokes every day. Just shows you very can healthy. do it. You can do it. And he sits in his office and reads. Cholesterol's only a number. Yes, but now, I mean, what is going to happen, not to put too fine a point in it, when he... It's a very good question. It's, it's really up there. I mean, uh, the worries there for many, um, you know, of these companies, a good example was Apple, when unfortunately mm. the founder passed away. And then mm -hmm. with Birdvest, with Brian Joffe leaving as a good example, uh, life goes on, the company yep. goes on. The company yep. is bigger uh, than Warren and Charlie. Um, there are obviously individuals in place to take over. The investor community is very yep. familiar with them. So I think short term, uh, Paul, it could be a little bit of a hiccup, but long term, I, I think it's just going to be a little bump in the road. Yes, but look, he keeps it together because of the sheer force of his personality and vision. But if he were to step down or die, then you would imagine that the you know, investment bankers would start circling like vultures because this would be a good opportunity to break it up and to spin certain things off to you know, offload the investment portfolio. I don't know. I don't think so. I think they're going to keep things as is and continue as they are. It's a great business model with that um, you know, free float that they've yeah. got and the reinvestment of it. I guess if they would want to unbundle, they would have done it already for shareholders' sake. But I don't think Charlie and Warren have the iron grip on the business that yeah. a lot of people think they do. Okay, well, let me go in a different tack then. Okay. What about the vision of the company is to kind of have all of these various parts, but what about if under new management they start to do purchases and acquisitions which don't really make sense anymore? Also, at the scale that it is now how do they grow from here you have to do eye popping deals in order to move the needle Correct. I mean, you can't really just buy things for a couple of billion okay. dollars well for, with a trillion rand uh, or 90 billion dollars they can do some big big deals i think yeah. the other thing is that if you look at the valuation of uh berkshire hathaway um it's it's important to look at pe but we tend to look at uh you know the book to um the value to book essentially yes. okay. and you know if that goes down to about sorry the price to book what am okay. i talking about the price to book if that goes down to about 1.2 that's when Berkshire Hathaway starts buying back their own shares. That's quite accretive to earnings going going forward. If you get to about 1.5, 1.6, the stock looks a little bit expensive. You start taking a bit of profit off the top there. Yeah. At the moment, the uh, price to book is 1.3. So it's getting to the cheapest side currently. So 
I would be a bit of a buyer on this stock closer to about 150. I can't believe we haven't looked at the share chart yet. There we Let's go, 165, I think it is. Yeah, there 165. Is. So the all time high was, I think, about 175. So it's a bit expensive at the moment, Paul, I would but say. But that was only like last month. Yes. So it's coming off a bit. <laughs> <laughs> but it's done extremely well. But I must point out that if you've been in the general, J, not JSC, S&P 500 yes. index, you've probably done somewhat similar to that. Because the market, of course, has been strong. So, you know, the market's had the Trump rally. You've done yes. about the same. But if you take it back and you have a look at his uh, letter to shareholders every year, yep. front page has got the return of the company since the early 60s until now. And absolute slaughtering good. of the S&P yeah. return. You've done incredibly well in Berkshire. Okay, that's all very well, but is it hot now for people going offshore, would you um, say? Right now at this price, I would not be buying Berkshire Hathaway. Mm. I'm going to be looking at uh, the price to book closer to 1.2, 1.3. Um, I think that creeps in at about $150. Oh, so okay. I would be a little bit happy at 150, maybe 155. Okay, although that price to book thing does change over time, it depending does. on the underlying. So that's not you need to, Well, you need to keep track cost. of it, yeah. So people will have to email you to find out what the <laughs> thing is currently. <laughs> Excellent. So you're saying not quite hot right now. Not right now, but I'm still hot on the stock. I'm still holding my position. <laughs> yeah, I'm wondering what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to go not hot. I'm okay. a bit of a direct equities guy. And for me anyway, I always like the idea of being in the underlyings, not so much. And I am a little concerned about the man's age. Right, now we're